So what we're going to learn today, guys, is we're going to learn how to do polynomial division. First one we're going to do is it's going to be something with a very straightforward divisor, so a linear term divisor. Then after that, we're going to look at if we can divide stuff with that can be quadratic divisors or cubic divisors. After you can do that, everything is just the same. Now you saw this in year 10, now you're seeing it again in year 12. We want to simplify this such that we're not going to write it as a fraction. Can't always do it, but because this is an example, it's guaranteed to work this time. So first step we need to do is we identify the denominator and we write it out. After that, we go for tabletop division. X to the five plus X to the four carefully spacing this out because we're going to do a few calculations underneath this because it's long division we're going for. Then complete the tabletop. All right, <clears throat> we've set ourselves up for success. What we're going to do now is we're going to carry out the long division. So looking at this, we always look at the highest order term in the expression we're dividing by, and then we look at the working term that we're up to in this case, because we haven't touched this one first, or we start with this one first because we haven't touched it yet. The question we ask ourselves is, how do you turn an x into an x to the power of five? What do we multiply it by? Brett? X to the power of four. X to the power of four. So because it's to the power of four, we write it up here. X to the power of four times X gives us X to the power of five. Now, X to the power of four times one gives us what, please, Mad Dog? X to the power of four. X to the power of four. So this is, this term here is this term here, but multiplied by X to the four. Now to this point, we bracket everything up underneath and we subtract x to the power of 5 times x to the power of 5 is? x to the power of 10. Nothing. x to the power of 5 subtracted by x to the power of 5 is? Zero. Did I say times? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, Sorry. now x to the power of 4 take away x to the power of 4 is? Zero. Zero, Zero. so it's nothing. So there's nothing there. Not the greatest example, but hey, it still works. Because we get nothing there, what we do is we bring down this guy. <coughs> so this is going to be 3x to the power of 3. Now how many terms do we have here? Two. Two. How many terms do we have to work with here? One. We've got one, but how many do we need? Two. Two. We've only got one, we bring down two to match how many we have here. So this is going to be 3x cubed minus 2x squared. Now, here's the question. How do we turn an x into a 3x squared? Sorry, 3x cubed. 3x squared. 3x squared. So because it's a squared, it goes up here, like so. Now, 3x squared times x is? 3x cubed. 3x cubed. 3x squared times 1 is? 3x squared. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract. 3x squared, 3x cubed, take away 3x cubed is? Zero, nothing. Nothing. Minus 2x squared, take away 3x squared is? Negative 5x squared. Very good, Mr. Sweets. Negative 5x squared. Done. Next step, we have one term to work with. How many do we need? Two. So we go across and we bring down. How do we turn x into minus x or minus 5x squared? Minus 5x. Minus 5x. <coughs> minus 5x times x, it gives us, please. Minus 5x squared. I should have put the... Can you see it? Alright. 
x times, or sorry, 1 times minus 5x is? Minus 5x. Minus 5x. Okay, and we need to be careful. The negative belongs to the 5, so we bracket the bottom line up and we subtract from the top. Uh, minus 5x squared, take negative 5x squared, gives us? Zero. Zero. Now, minus 3x, take minus 5x, gives us? 2x. 2x. We have one term, we need two, so we bring down the next working term, which is plus two. How do we turn x into a 2x? Times two. Times two. So we go plus two, and then we do it. Two times x is two x, two times one is two. Bracket it up, subtract. 2x take 2x is nada. 2 take 2 is nada. So because of that, we have no remainder left over. Now, in terms of simplifying this, that's a plus set. Uh, if we have this divided by that, what we end up with is our quotient on the top here. So this top line here is equal to x to the power of 4 plus 3x squared minus 5x plus 2. Does that seem doable? Yeah. It's a lot of steps, isn't it? It's just like primary school. Yeah, it's just like long division in primary school, but with algebra. Okay, so let's go back and summarize. We have a polynomial and we're trying to divide it by another polynomial. In this case, it's a nice linear one, simple. The way we do this is we put our divisor on the outside, draw a tabletop, and under the tabletop, we put our dividend, so the numerator in this case, or the thing we're dividing. From there, we look at the first two terms and we say, how do we make these guys match? What do we need to do to this guy to make it look like that guy? In this case, because we multiply by x to the 4, we say, okay, I need to multiply by x to the 4. I look for the 4 forward term and then write what it needs to be multiplied by above the equivalent term or the equivalent order. And then I just do it for both the terms in the divisor. Once I've done that, I do it. So I do the multiplication on this with that, I write it underneath and then I subtract from one another. Notice that I'm very careful with my brackets and my subtraction symbol out here. If I don't do the brackets, I'm prone to making errors of like subtracting these two and then adding these two. Follow the process all the way down. As soon as you run out, you keep grabbing them and bringing them down. So we ran out on the first go. So we just brought two down on the second go. On the second go, uh, we only cancelled out the first term, so we only bring down a single one. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if we follow the process, we're able to do division. If we get a non-zero answer at the end, what does that tell us? It's complex. It's not complex. Uh, it doesn't. If we get an answer at the or if we get a non-zero answer at the end, either means one, we did it wrong, or two, these two are not or this is not divisible by that perfectly. Does that sound alright? Does that mean there'll be remainders? Sorry? Does that mean there'll be remainders? Yeah, though if there's a remainder at the end, it would be whatever you have down here over that fraction there. That's to come later in the course. Yeah. So Simple. all these questions we have now, they won't have remained? No, I made sure they didn't. I like that.